Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester two, routine and switching essentials. This is chapter eight, single area OSPF, and section 8.3, configure single area OSPF version three. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to compare the characteristics and operations of OSPF version two to OSPF version three. Configure single area OSPF version 3 in a small router network and then be able to verify single area OSPF version 3 in a small router network. So OSPF version 2 against OSPF version 3. Both version 2 and version 3 they keep three tables. They keep the neighbor table, that's the table of all our neighbor adjacencies. We keep the topology table, this is the whatever our neighbors are telling us, we keep it in our database. And then we pick the best route from that database and we stick it on our routing table. But OSPF version 3, the source address is from the link local address, you know, the FF80 and then the, the rest of the link local address. The destination address is FF02 column column 5, addresses the all OSPF router addresses, address, or FF02 column column 6 is the DR and BDR multicast address or it can be a link local address, but those are the destination addresses. These are the similarities between OSPF version 2 and version 3. They both are link state routing protocol. They both run the algorithm shortest path first, and then both use the metric as a cost, which is derived from bandwidth. They both use areas. They do support a two hierarchy, level hierarchy, the packet types are both the same, the five different packet types. We have hello, DBD, LSR, LSU, and LSAC. Neighbors transition through the same state using the hello packets. The DR and BDR function and election process is the same. And the router ID is 32-bit router ID. It's determined the router ID is the same in both protocols. So even for IPv6, we still have the IPv4 kind of format as the router ID. The difference between OSPF version 2 and version 3, well, for version 2, we advertise IPv4 networks, and for version 3, we advertise IPv6 networks. In version 2, we configure with a network command under the router configuration mode, while in version 3, we advertise IPv6 prefixes. And this is configured using IPv6 OSPF area interface configuration command. IPv4 prefixes uses the address family options. So we can advertise IPv4 in version 3 and IPv6. If we advertise IPv4, we have to use address families. The source address, IPv4 source address, IPv6 is using the link local address. The destination, obviously, these are the two different destinations. You can see 224.005, while FF02, colon, colon 5, and then 6, colon 6. Unicast routing, IPv6 unicast routing, it is enabled by default. In IP in OSPF, we do need to, version 3, we do need to enable IPv6 unicast routing. OSPF version 2 does support plain text and MD5 authentication, while OSPF version 3, it does support authentication through use of IPsec. To configure the OSPF, first, this is just a general configuration of uh, IPv6. IPv6 unicast routing, and then we go to the interface. Each interface we give a description and we give an IP address. This is a global unicast address and no shutdown. Now, to configure OSPF version 3, first we have to enable unicast routing. Then we have to configure a link local address optional. If you don't configure, it's just going to derive from the MAC address, but it's better if you actually, actually go and configure a link local address. Then we have to make sure that we are given a 32-bit router ID using the router ID command, router hyphen ID, and then router ID command. Configure optional specifics, uh, routing specifics, such as adjusting the reference bandwidth. Then step five is optional. Configure OSPF version three interface specific settings. For, is it, for example, adjust the interface bandwidth. And last step is actually, you need to go and enable it on the interface. So enable IPv6 routing by using IPv6 OSPF and then area command, and this is on the interface. Link local addresses, um, they can be created automatically. 
uh, using EUI64, which is using the MAC address. Um, but again, the best thing is um, to actually configure it yourself. Uh, using the UI64 is like taking the MAC address, which is 48 bit, and then adding in the middle FFFE to make 64 bit. And the seventh bit is flipped from zero, it's set to one. If we do want to configure ourselves and link local addresses, then we have to go to the interface and say IPv6 address, FE80, colon, colon, whatever, one for router one, for example, and then link hyphen local. As you can see, all our three interfaces, they have the same link local address because this is just confined on the local link only. Router ID is the same, same way you can get the router ID. We can explicitly configure our router ID. Only will pick the highest loopback address if any loopback is, is enabled. If we don't configure ourselves, if we go and find an IPv4 address of loopback and use that as router ID. If not, they will go and find the IPv4 interface, physical interface IP address, and use that as the router ID. If not, then it will give you error, saying, okay, well, no router ID, we can't start the process because there's no router ID. So this is the configuration, IP v6, router OSPF 10, so process 10. We enable router ID 111, change the auto cost reference bandwidth, which we have a gigabit ethernet, so we have to change it to 1000 here. And then that's it. We don't, we don't write network here. We actually have to go to the interface and per interface, we have to type uh, the network. So for example, we say in interface gigabit zero zero, IPv6, OSPF 10, area zero. And then other two interfaces do the same thing. Show IPv6, OSPF interface brief. You can see that we have three interfaces all in area zero. Show IPv6, OSPF neighbor similar to IPv4, if, uh, if you saw the section 8.2, we went through all of these and pretty much the same information is here. Show IPv6 root, OSPF, here we've see, seen only the OSPF routes and we can see the networks that we learned and we can see via what what is a neighbor's exit interface. What is our, our exit interface and neighbor's link local address. Thank you very much for watching this section 8.3 configure single area OSPF version 3. Please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe.